Uh, I think Mark your calendar. I think Joe Mercadante knows exactly what you're talking about. As uh, I think we're going to head over to the University of North Florida to see if we can test this thing out. And uh, uh, if Joe can hear us, uh, give us. Yeah, I think he can hear us shaking his head. How you doing, Joe? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry I missed the memo for the Friday fits. That was uh, I would have <laughs> stepped up my game a little bit to the ballpark today if I knew you guys were rolling it out like that. <laughs> yeah, you guys have a good fit, by the way. That's just fine. It's my fits that uh, are not fine. You know exactly what Austin was just talking about. You had nine-year-old uh, baseball last night, and now the real deal today. I did, and it was it was nice to just get out there and kind of uh, decompress and watch my kids just play the game and uh, just be a dad instead of a coach for a little bit. But it uh, woke me up this morning with a little bit of energy, ready to get going. First day, opening day is always a great day. I saw you still like uh, on social media last night. I got a feeling that you didn't sleep very much uh, heading into this debut at the <laughs> University of North Florida. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling good. I'm just excited for these guys. They've they've worked really really hard. Uh, obviously, you know you have a whole new coaching staff coming in. That's a lot of new you know systems, new foundations, new you know fundamentals, and and they've just worked their butts off every day. And I'm just excited for them to go out and just play baseball and get a chance to kind of relax with each other and get out there and just do the thing they love to do. So when you talk about myself coming from the world of, you know, football and everything, when a new coach comes in, you know, there's a new intensity, right? There's a new way of doing things, building a culture. How does it work in baseball right. and for your staff? Like, what were some of your goals? What did you try to implement? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you talk about building a culture, it, it starts kind of grassroots. Like, you have to get to know the kids. And, um, you know, we certainly had a way we wanted to do things. All of my coaches that are on my staff, I've, I've known for a good bit, but even our pitching coach came from a, a tradition-rich program that knows what it takes to get to regional play and NCAA level. And that's you're winning baseball, no matter where you come from, there's a lot of consistent things that are in play. Um, and, and we all kind of fell in line as a coaching staff of what we expected in terms of effort, intensity, energy, commitment to what we're trying to do and so the 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 transition from the coaching staff we were always in unison and the players just from day one you know once they saw that we were we were here to, to sweat with them work with them grind with them uh, it, it's been a really good transition and, and again they've, they've been an awesome group to work with Marcel Robinson's giving us a look uh, at batting practice going on right now let's talk about hitting what do you see out of this club they hit the ball pretty well last year if I remember but you also lose some uh, key parts of that lineup to all this NIL and transfer portal madness how do you feel about your lineup going into this season I, I like it. I think, you know, today especially we've got three returners that got a lot of meaningful at-bats for the, the Ospreys last year. You know, Cade Reish and uh, Cherokee Nichols and Jacob Runnels are, are, you know, a good one, two, three. And then we've got, I, I believe, five five returners, four newcomers in the lineup. So a little bit of a mix with some new and some old. But, um, you know, last year obviously they hit the long ball a good bit. You know, we're, we're going to be able to do that. But, you know, Coach Holt, who's running the offense, has done a tremendous job uh, teaching how we're going to run our game, which is, you know, trying to pressure the other team. We're going to – be in, in motion quite a bit more, be able to play the short game, be able to pressure the other team. Um, and, and when you have that, you know, it, it, it creates different ways for you to score runs when you're facing a really good arm. And no matter what conference you're in, you're going to run into some Friday nights where you got a, a, just a bear on the mound and you got to find a way to scrap a couple across. And um, Coach Holt's done a great job kind of getting that in play and, and teaching them how we're going to do things. So I'm excited. I think we're going to certainly have a different lineup at the end of the year than we have today. That's always the case, right? But, um, you know, we've got, you know, 12 12, 13 guys we feel like we can rotate into the lineup that are going to give us some good at-bats and, and also have different ways to help us offensively. The Brent and Austin show, and we're live at batting practice before the season opener with Joe Mercadante, uh, kind enough to join us for a couple of minutes before a new era starts for the University of North Florida Ospreys. Uh, they'll play two today uh, against Delaware in a three-game set. This is interesting, right? You don't really know your team yet, and you sure as heck don't know the team you're playing yet. Uh, it's kind right. of a wild time when you open up like this. It is, you know, you, you, there's certainly technology has come a long way with, you know, advanced scouting and understanding your opponent and getting video and metrics and, you know, numbers. But there's so many players that are moving from place to place this day and age. And, you know, this team has has a lot of new players from, you know, Delaware talking about have a lot of transfers from the Juco market where they're kind of the unknown guys. There's not as much video uh, as you find at the D1 level. So you certainly uh, come into this game kind of having a feel for what the opponent is, but also just focusing on your strengths. So, you know, this is. As we told the guys, we're not going to be a finished product today, but we're going to be in a good position where if we go out and execute what we're good at, we're going to be fine. But, um, yeah, it's, it's always kind of a, a, a wild card when you get out there just to see what the other team is. And, and certainly, as you said, uh, you think you know your team, but it's it's always different when a guy with a different jersey steps in the box or is on across you in the pitcher's mound, that's for sure. 
Hey, Coach, this is Jason Hemby. Can you kind of take us through your uh, weekend starters, your lineup uh, specifically for this weekend and what strengths uh, you think will be – your pitchers will be at to start the season and what you, you're hoping that they'll kind of grow into uh, as the season progresses? Yeah, so our, our three starters for this weekend, Will Ross is going to get the start in game one. Um, Will Redster last year had some had an arm surgery that he's bounced back for and, and has a, has had a really good preseason for us. Um, you know, big guy, has got some uh, angle down the mound, not going to blow you away at the fastball, but has three good pitches that he can kind of mix as he needs to and, and elevate the baseball work in, be able to throw the change up and the breaking ball for strikes. And uh, we're excited about him, and he's only going to get stronger, as I said. You know, he's, he's in a good spot coming out of surgery, but is only going to get stronger as he gets some more reps under his belt uh and then obviously you got mr reliable peter holden's gonna be we just wanted to keep him you know he's he's our one starter but wanted to keep him in that six o'clock slot just because that's where he he knew he was starting didn't want to change it up too much when we you know flipped it to the double header um but you know pete you can't say enough about him he's he you know is not going to blow you away with anything but he pitches with the mindset of a guy that throws 98 and and will go to both sides of the plate will double up triple up on pitches he's just he's he's a dream from a pitch calling and just competitiveness uh, one of the better teammates you're going to find. He's just he's a, he's a great kid, and I'm I'm super excited to see what he's going to do with this year. And then and Tony Roca is going to be the third starter for us on Sunday. And uh, Tony's got some stuff. You know, he's going to guy that's going to be a low 90s to mid 90s guy. Has a good breaking ball. Has a good um, you know change up split, and and is able to miss some bats. So uh, you know those three are, are our starters to roll out there to start. But you know Coach Mike and, and and Drew have done a tremendous job developing the depth of the staff. You know we feel like as you're looking at it, we've got got some numbers to run out there you know we've uh, got some guys with some different looks some different arm slots be able to come in a little bit more breaking ball heavy out of the bullpen and just match up and that's what this becomes because uh, you know uh, over the three game series especially when you get into conference play you're going to be able to you're going to have to go to some different arms and certainly as you look ahead to you know a sun championship you got to be able you can't just win that thing with six or seven arms you're going to have to have nine ten eleven guys that are going to be able to contribute so you know developing that pitching staff is going to be a big thing for us and making sure we're not just rolling out the same eight because you're certainly going to have to lean on more than that when you get to the postseason coach i'd love to ask you a follow-up on tony roca you know he's not a guy who's mm-hmm. uh afraid to let you know that he's jacked uh are you a fr- are you a fan of the gun show that he supports up there on the mound <laughs> Tony's uh, the thing I love about Tony is Tony's himself and he's comfortable in his skin and he's uh, he's got his own way of doing things and I think you know a big thing we talked about is guys be yourselves and, and make sure uh, you get fired up and show off the guns a little bit if you need to but also keep yourself uh, focused on on the task at hand and be a good part of the team and, and, and carry your part but yeah Tony Tony uh, I love him man he's he's always he's, he's the guy that is, is meal prepping he's always in the lounge cracking out his Tupperware with his two lunches and his, you know, his first lunch and then his second lunch, and uh, but he's he's on top of it. he's a great great dude and uh, certainly a guy that we, we enjoy having on the team for sure. Uh, come on, those pitchers are like goalies and and like uh, specialists in football. Those guys are the strange guys, but they give you they're the life of the party too. You you got to have them, um, and uh, hopefully Absolutely. he does well this weekend. All of them do. Uh, Joe Mercadante, uh, I'd love to go shag some fly balls out there right now. The batting practice is always fun, but. Uh, we appreciate you Come taking a few minutes. Come on out and take minutes. some swings one of these days. We'll get, we'll get you a couple <laughs> rounds, see if you can get yeah. it out. I'll make sure the wind's blowing out for you, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely make sure, like, big time blowing out. Uh, Joe Mercadante, we really appreciate you taking a few minutes. I know it's a busy, fun, anxious kind of day for you and the, the whole team, but thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it.